In an earlier video, I took a look at the Flash ROM 99 for the Texas Instruments TI-99 4A. This modern cartridge combined with an SD card provides access to 171 ROM games and applications. As I'm new to the world of the TI-99 4A, I decided to choose the Flash ROM instead of another device called the Final ROM because I was worried about compatibility with quality improved versions of the TI motherboard. As I learned, I do not have the QI board, so I have the opportunity now to explore another device, which is the successor to the Flash ROM 99 called the Final Grom 99. Flash ROM? Final Grom? Flash ROM? It's going to get really confusing in this edition of Retro Combs. In my original video where I talk about the purchase of my TI-99 4A, I talk about this power supply and want to know about the weirdness of this power supply. No, that brick is not the weirdness I'm talking about. The weirdness I'm talking about is the other end, this cable, which seems to have this extra extension cable just kind of tacked on, spliced, soldered, uh, hard-coded. I mean, everything is on here. What is this about? Well, it turns out that Robin over at 8-Bit Show & Tell just recently did a video on why this was included. Seems it was part of a recall. I will not go into that since he did all the heavy lifting and the research, but make sure you check out the video description below and I have a link to the companion blog post that has all the links to Robin's description of why this was added. Uh, turns out that maybe uh, you could set these TI-99 4As on fire. We definitely don't want that to happen. You know, after my look at the Flash ROM 99, Retrocomb supporter Jeffrey Phipps sent a generous, and, I'm, and I mean generous donation via my Buy Me A Coffee account that covered the cost of an updated device called no surprise, the Final Grom 99, which has been developed by Inloss 99. Jeffrey asked that I use the funds to purchase the hardware for the open source Final Grom 99 and compare it to the Flash Rom 99. I immediately made the purchase and am now making good on my promise to Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. I really appreciate your support of the blog and the YouTube channel, and this episode would not be possible if it weren't for you. Thanks again. All right, for this video, let's go ahead and dive in to the content and see what the differences are between the Flash ROM 99 and the Final Grom 99 by first taking a look at the Final Grom 99. If you're not familiar with the Flash ROM 99, be sure and look at the video description below for the companion blog post where you'll find all the links. While you're down there, make sure you hit subscribe, like. Hey, if you want to give a thanks like Jeffrey did and support the channel, you can do that too down below. Or you can also find a link to my Buy Me A Coffee account. So I mentioned that I purchased the final Grom 99 after I received the generous donation from Jeffrey, and I did it from the same vendor that I purchased the Flash Rom 99 from, The Brewing Academy. The cost was $85, and it was a significant increase from the $35 I spent on the Flash Rom 99. This is why I was so appreciative of Jeffrey's donation. I'm not sure I would have made the purchase, or it would have been a while longer before I did because of the increase in cost. When you make your purchase at the Brewing Academy for either the Flash ROM 99 or the Final Grom 99, you have a really cool option to spend an additional $10 and choose a color for the 3D printed case. And I chose a tan color case for my Final Grom 99 to distinguish it from the black case of the Flash ROM 99. I was hoping it would match perfectly with the beige case that I have on my TI-99 4A. That wasn't quite the case, but I do like it and I think it fits nicely as you can see. As I mentioned, the case is printed by the Brewing Academy and uses PLA. It has the familiar 3D printed layers and the Brewing Academy includes a nice feature, the Texas Instruments and the Brewing Academy logo on the top of the cartridge. The case is solid and the Brewing Academy print is substantial. Two Phillips head screws that are not flush with the case hold the case together. Like the Flash ROM 99, unfortunately, the label design on the front of the Final Grom 99 is nice, but it's peeling off. I continue my recommendation that the Brewing Academy really needs to work on some kind of adhesive for these labels. The PLA encases the electronic components and the SD card reader is securely attached to the circuit board. The SD card seats with a click. Press in on the SD card to hear another click and it releases from the reader. The LED light is bright. The reset button is a bit of a concern 
both of them, both the reset for the TI-994A that's on the cartridge and for the final Grom, they're a bit flimsy. I keep worrying every time I press them and I'm gonna break off the little PLA tips. The final Grom does come with an instruction manual. This is a little piece of paper here. It's basically an eight and a half by 11 sheet or a couple of sheets with a staple in the middle and appears to be just a simple reprint from Inloss 99's webpage. All right, so that's what's in the package. Now let's talk about how to prepare an SD card for use in the final Grom 99. You wanna make sure that your SD card is formatted in FAT32. So we can do that by using, in my case on a Mac, Command I, and it'll show us the format of the SD card, which is FAT32. If you're not sure how to create a FAT32 partitioned SD card, check online. There are lots of videos. We're not gonna cover it in this one. All right, here we have the Flash ROM 99 SD card that I used earlier with the Flash ROM 99. What I've done is I've taken these files off of here and I've backed them up into a folder right here. So these are all of those files. Now you could use these files, but we're going to expand because the final Grom will use more than 171 files. And we're going to put a nice collection of software right on this Flash ROM 99 SD card. But before we do that, let's rename that to final Grom 99. And again, I'm making sure I have this back up here, right? So make sure you have that. And then we're gonna to go to the website that contains uh, a, a whole list of cartridge files for the final Grom 99. Link is in the companion blog post, but you can also see that link right up here. It's ftp period whtech.com slash cartridges slash final Grom 99. So I will click on that and download it and open that and you'll see that it's already expanded that zip file, that archive for me. So I'll double click there. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all these. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to copy, I'm gonna come over to my final Grom, open up that window and move that down here. We will paste all six items. Now, you will notice that on the flash Grom we couldn't use directories. On the final Grom, we can use directories. So we'll go ahead and let this complete the copying of the files over to the SD card. One of the things you'll note is it's only 10.1 megabytes to collect the entire ti 99 a history of cartridges, uh, and that seems like a small storage price to pay for that entire collection or that library. I'm excited to dig in here and see what files are included. You will see in the image here or in the directory here, there is an image list.txt. Tell you what, while that's loading, let's go ahead and do a quick look of that and see what we get. Look at all of the software that's available in this package. My guess is it pretty much collects the entirety of the TI-994A solid state cartridges. So there's the whole collection of tools. So what we'll do is close that window. We will eject that SD card and now we're ready to move that over to the final Grom hardware itself. All right, so how do you use the final Grom 99? Well, it's a very simple process and it is very similar to the Flash Grom 99 with the exception of one additional button, which is the reset the TI-99 for a button. Okay, let's go ahead and try the final Grom out. If we look down here, you'll see I have the final Grom uh, 99. I have the SD card already inserted. This is already preloaded with all of the Grom and Grom files I could find in the download that's in the video description. You'll see we have the two buttons. We have a reset and then we have the reset the final Grom 99. So what we do is we plug this in to the TI-994. We go ahead and we turn on the computer here. Now I do have a 32K expansion sidecar over here. It's already plugged in because uh, many of these titles will require the 32K. So you'll see that we have the screen. Now if I press any key, you'll see that I have two options. One for TI Basic, which is the standard, and two for the final Grom. If I press two, you see that we get a list. Now. Unlike the Flash ROM, the Final Grom can have folders, and we navigate through the folders using the character next to the folder name. So for instance, if I wanna to go to the dev folder, I hit A. Once I'm in A, I can also use, if it scrolls uh, beyond the screen, I can use period, 
or comma to go forward and backward. And you can see all of the ROM files or GROM files I have. Now you'll see we have things like TI Extended Basic. Let's go ahead and try and load TI Extended Basic. So we're going to hit L. And you'll see we have TI Extended Basic, if I can talk. Now we can verify that if I use the size command, just to go ahead and see what the size is of our internal memory. That is a command that's not available in TI Basic, so we know that that is working. Now the great thing about the final GROM is that that can be my default cartridge, so to speak, when I reset. So if I go ahead and reset the computer, press enter, if I don't reset the final GROM, you see number two, TI Extended Basic is the default, and I can just hit two. Now, if I wanted that to just be the default period, if that were the only ROM or GROM file I had on this SD card, it would only it would boot up to that only. It wouldn't pull up the menu. That would be the default. But that's not really what we want to do. So if I, again, reset, come back, you'll see it's still in there as the GROM, the final GROM is acting as a TI Extended Basic. So how do I get rid of that? How do I get back to my larger listing of files? It's a simple matter. Go ahead and reset our computer. And when we're on this screen, then we come over and we hit the reset the final GROM 99. There's a LED right here that's going to light up when I press this button. When that light goes out, then it's ready to go. So I'm going to hit that. It only takes a half second. It's done. It's already done. So I hit enter. And now you'll see that the option I have number two, final GROM 99 is back on the screen. So now I can hit two. And we have our options again. So let's go ahead and uh, let's look at the uh, games folder. You can see our little spinning down there. And you see we have a 32 kilobyte games folder. Let's go ahead and go in there since we do have our memory expansion on here. And these are the games that we can play. Let's go ahead and bring up something that I've never played. Let's play Angler Dangler. Now, I do not have the joystick plugged in. I'm just going to load it and let you see it. And again, what I really love about this is how fast it loads. Oh, I, I would assume almost as fast as, as if this were a solid state cartridge. So the music is playing. Game is ready. And there's the game. We can go fishing. That looks. That actually looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I don't know if I can use it with... Oh, I can use a keyboard, which is good. So, not sure what I'm doing, but you get the point. So, you can see we can play this game. And then when you're done with the game, what do we do? We simply hit the reset on the main screen. We hit the flash ROM. Or, I'm sorry. I knew I would do it. I knew I would do it. Not the flash ROM, which is... This guy right here, not the, not that one, the final Grom. I knew I was going to do that. And uh, we've already reset that, so we go back in here and we have final Grom. And what I'm going to do is uh, we are going to pull up the Super X Basic, just to see if it works. And there we go. So there are a lot of these different cartridges that provide uh, additional commands in Basic because... The TI is notorious for having the worst built-in basic. Let's do one more. Let's bring up a different programming language. And you can see as you get going, you can move through these pretty fast. And I want you to kind of see that. Uh, I can move through these cartridges really, really fast. And let's go ahead and pull up. Uh, we're going to, I don't think I can get 80 columns. So we're going to use PB fourth here. And now if you want to program in fourth, there you go. You got it right there, ready to roll. So we're going to reset. By and large, I, I, I think you'll agree that this is a very good experience. And, um, you know, what makes this fun is, uh, again, I'm experiencing, experiencing this TI computer for the very first time in 2021. Had I purchased this computer in the 1980s, there's no way I would have had the opportunity to try all of these wonderful games and programs on this computer. So I'm getting to really play uh, things that I never would have seen. Now, I'm going to do one last thing uh, before we uh, talk about some other things, and I'm going to play you out with a little thing I found during a live stream I did recently where I had a uh, good friend, Mark, make a donation to the live stream, and he said, hey, I want you to play Axel F. And so I did, and we just had the most fun. So I'm going to give you a little piece of that here. probably get a YouTube strike on this one. It's too good. 
So now that we've talked about the final Grom 99, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the files that you can load using the final Grom 99 on your TI 99 4A. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, final thoughts. What do I think about the Flash ROM 99 as opposed to the Final Grom 99? Well, first of all, one of the things you'll notice is that the Final Grom 99 is more in line with the size of an actual solid state cartridge. They're almost identical, as a matter of fact. So I do like that. Again, if you look at the Flash ROM, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, it's got more heft to it. It's, it's deeper, but then it's also got the SD card extruding out of the case itself. I don't like that. I do like what how this looks where the SD card reader is inside and it's easy to get your SD card in and out without uh, catching your finger on that reader. We do have the same issue with the label again that I mentioned. Um, but other than that, uh, I can fix that with a little adhesive myself. As far as features though, let's face it, this is a much better solution than this. Uh, one of the main reasons is because this will hold more than 144 ROMs or GROMs, which is the maximum that this will hold. Uh, also, this supports directories. So having directories and being able to organize your files is a really nice feature. So one of the things I like about that is image files that require, for instance, the 32 kilobyte expansion can all be in a folder so that we know we need the 32 KB sidecar for those image files. And of course, the other thing to like about it is this thing plays almost everything out there. Uh, this was limited again to only ROM files. This supports ROM and GROM files and speed is very good. It's, it's about the same on both of them. I did not see a speed difference in loading. I wasn't doing any benchmark testing, but it seems really nice. I also love that we have the additional uh, reset for the computer. You can hit that reset as I showed earlier and then you can reset the device, whereas this one just resets the device. Again, it's kind of convenient just to be able to reset your computer here and then reset your final ground without taking your hands and needing to go to the keyboard and do that business. So overall, is it worth the $50? I, you know, knowing what I know now, I probably would have not have purchased this, but I'm glad I did because now I know the differences between the two and I'm able to provide that information to you to help you make an informed choice. But do remember, if you have a TI-994A with a QI or quality improved main board, you are really stuck with this you're not gonna be able to use the final ground. So that might be a reason you purchase this as opposed to the final ground. 
So I think that's about it. I think I've uh, done a decent job of covering the final Grom, or at least my experiences with it. I know there are those of you out there who have a lot more experience using this. Would love to see your comments. What did I miss? What did I forget? What should I have said? Put that in the comments in the video description below because your feedback makes these videos and companion blog posts even better. Typically what I do, as a re uh, just as a reminder, when I get new information, I do update the companion blog post. I can't easily update the videos, as you all know. I'd have to take it down and repost it. But if I have some video errata or rata, however you want to say that, uh, that will appear in the companion blog post. I also, again, have lots more information about this device and some of the advanced features, so be sure and check out that. So I did do a live stream where I was playing around with the TI-994A, had some issues, and uh, the live stream folks were able to help me put that together. Make sure and check that out. There's a link for that where I've edited, edited, <laughs> I made an edit of that hour and 45 minutes and significantly compacted that. So you may want to take a look at that too and see some of the things I learned while trying this out and uh, we played some games with it. It's, it's kind of a fun um, live stream if you want to take a look at the edit for that. So I believe that's it. Uh, we got a lot of things coming up over the holidays. Uh, happy Thanksgiving if this gets out to folks before Thanksgiving in the United States. We have Christmas coming up. We have the big release of the Mega 65. It's going to be hitting the doors of the first 400 somewhere around December, which I'm hopeful that that will be on my door. I, I appear to have made the first 400 list, so I'll be having some videos there. Uh, will be some intermittent live streams along the way, so make sure you subscribe so you know when those are coming and when I pop online. So for now, I think that's it. So Retro Cones out.